I don't really think of myself as a Gaijin icon. I'm always surprised. Um, it's just funny. I live in San Francisco. I have a very strong queer Asian community. My friends are not impressed by me. Like, you know, like we hang out or like, like, I don't, I don't think, um, I, I guess I don't really live my life thinking that, uh, 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 maybe because I don't live online that much. Um, I don't, I don't, I did not realize actually until this film was going to come out, how many people were waiting for another movie. So that was a, that's a new thing for me, but I'm sure Michelle and Lynn, because that's the other thing as the director, you're not in front of the camera. So people tend to ascribe everything to, you know, like, like Michelle and Lynn are rec much more recognizable. Um, so I'm sure they have a much, uh, uh, a much more public experience of it than I do. I mean, I guess I was just trying, I think in our society, we tend to ascribe like a, a crazy amount of importance to romantic love. We tend to exalt it as the purest and most important love, right? And I think, um, you know, certainly growing up and reading like Victorian novels and watching romantic comedies, like everything seems to point to when you find that person that you're destined to be with romantically, your life will be complete. And as I've gotten older, I've sort of discovered that that kind of isn't necessarily true. Like, I think that's an important component. And like romantic love is wonderful, but it's certainly not the only one. And it's certainly not the best. It's just one of many, right? Like there's the love you might have for a friend or there's a love you have for your father or there's the love that you have for your pet. Like all those various things are different forms of love. Um, and in the case of Ellie and Paul, I thought it was really interesting to try and write a story through the lens of like, I mean, Ellie's not out to herself yet. Like I don't think like she's didn't, she's 17. So it's not like she's like, I'm queer, but clearly she can like girls, right? So it's this sort of, like clearly it's like a, like a girl who is like slowly uh, maybe coming to terms with her queer uh, sexuality. And this like straight conservative white guy, like these two very, very different people that somehow managed to connect. And as a result, each ends up helping each other with the piece of, uh, like they end up emotionally growing in a way that allows them to become the people they need to be. And I thought that was an interesting thing to show uh, because it's sort of hopeful, right? That as humans, that sometimes the least likely person can end up being the person who might uh, show some, show you something about yourself and allow your life to move forward. <laughs> but I certainly hope that, um, I mean, I like to think that, that the more people speak their truth, like I, I truly believe that the truth will set us free. Like I, I have a deep belief in that. I don't always manage to do it well myself. Like I always, like I definitely lie to myself, but I try really hard not to. And I think the more of us who ascribe to that, I think probably the better for society.